Hello everyone, this is Tyler with Diesel Laptops talking to you today about the new version of Texa Truck. Version 43 just got released here December of 2017. And I'm really quickly going to go through all the different new upgrades and options and kind of give you an idea of what it does. So the first has to do with Volvo and Mack trucks. What Texa has done here is for both the 2017 and 18 models, plus they've gone back to some of the older stuff and added a lot more parameters, a lot more things that you can do with the vehicle. So I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, I'm on a Volvo, and I picked the new OBD2 cable on it. And I'm going to go down to diesel injection. And I'm going to go into, uh, there's actually two areas. There's, there's diesel injection, where a lot of people go, and they think this is where you need to go. But there's actually another one here called engine vehicle adjustments. And that's where we're going to go in here and play around a little bit. So I'm going to go into a special demo mode. I don't actually have a live ECM hooked up. So we're somewhat limited here on what we can show you and what we can do, but I think you'll like what you see. So I'm going to hit confirm button a couple times to get through all the menu options so you can see what's happening. And what you'll find here is on Volvos and Macs in particular, this is one of the first vehicle manufacturers that Texa ever did when they first came out with their software years ago, and it is by far the strongest. So we're super excited to see what they've added in here. And you'll notice that there, as vehicles come out, there's always new EC variants or new versions or something slightly different than the one before. And your case files and your times that you guys call us to say we can't connect, those all go into making the software we're better not just for you but for everybody so until you actually see a new truck on the market it's hard to make sure the software works but as you can see now it's already scanning all the parameters in here and uh, as it pops up you will see we are reading 300 parameters on a volvo engine which is actually pretty unbelievable so again we're in demo mode so a lot of this stuff is just null values that are in here but you can go on any of these and double click them and see all the charts that feature has been in there for a while but where the rubber meets the road is besides viewing things what can we see so if we go over here to settings tab you will see there is literally page after page after page after page of possible parameters that can be changed by the engine. I actually did go through and count all these up and there was over 250 that you could actually change. So there's quite a slew of them. And this was just in the special parameterization section. So as I go through that list and I, I know I'm going kind of quick there through it, but as you can go through it, you can kind of get an idea of everything that can be changed on it, right? And that was just the engine vehicle adjustments that we were in. So if you go into the other areas of this vehicle as we kind of go back and try to look at cab controllers and ABS and other subsystems that are on there as well, you'll find that there's more than enough that can be changed. So there's ECU lights, electronic braking system, and again, even diesel injection had kind of a special parameterization section that you can change. So you should be very, very well covered for both your OBD2, which is the new 2013 and newer, and the vehicles before OBD2 are the same way plenty of areas to go into just make sure you're going to engine vehicle adjustments when you're trying to change things like road speed and pto settings a lot of customers call on getting confused because they're in here and they don't see it so it is kind of hidden in a different area so next new update besides the volvo and max stuff that's all been done is they've added for kenworth and peterbilt trucks you now have a lot more you can do with the cab controllers so if we click all the way through here to pack car engine You'll notice we have Gateway in here now as well. Reprogramming of the cab control unit. Yes, you can now do that on Kenworth and Peterbilt trucks. That's new in there. Uh, there are basically tons of tests, commands, and everything else. I can't actually go into it because I don't have a demo mode and I don't have a pack car in front of me, but you can do things such as gauge tests, cluster tests, sound tests. Uh, you can perform configuration, the dashboard lighting, the drivetrain, electrical, lighting, option gauges, standard gauges, and, uh, and a whole bunch more. So that's all been done. Another new thing that got fixed finally, it's one of the biggest complaints we've had with customers, is Caterpillar takes way too long to connect. So if I actually scroll the way through here and go to Cat, uh, you would notice for old customers that have been here forever, it did take two, three, four minutes sometimes to connect to a Caterpillar engine, and that has been fixed. So now it is greatly, greatly reduced time. The other great thing that we found is that they have added more of the older ECU variants. Again, Texa, they can only fix and add what they can get their hands on. So typically, brand new trucks rolling out of the factory floor until they can get their hands on them. 
they really can't do anything. And these trucks that are 15, 20 years old, there's just not a lot of them on the highway anymore. So until the text engineers can get onto one or get our customers on one, it's hard for them to go back and fix and do those things. But they obviously are working that continually uh, to keep updating. So let's go back over now to the medium duty side. So on medium duty, we'll notice a whole bunch of new icons that are placed in here. All right. So the very first one is the GMC and Chevy stuff. Uh, while before the Sierra was not broken out, it is broken out now. And I think you will find the coverage very, very good. So we just went into an 05 through 13 GMC Sierra and you can see everything that has the new on it are all these new subsystems they've added. So yes, we can do commands on basically every single ECU that is on these GMC and Sierra trucks. The other one that's been updated, if I go back here to GMC, is the C-Series, and you'll now see there is a 7.8 diesel option in here as well. So this would be the bigger one, the 6HK, this is the six-cylinder. You typically find this on the Isuzu F-Series, which is really the same engine. So they're all in here now as well. So sometimes customers will see this and say, oh, you only have 2003 through 2009 covered. You don't have full coverage. No, no, no. That just means the 7.8 liter was only put in to years 2003 through 2009. That doesn't mean we don't have coverage for it. It just means they didn't use the engine after that year. So there you go. Isuzu engine control unit proprietary protocol. They're in there. All right. Going on to another one. We're going to back up here to American Heavy Duty and we're going to go to International. So International, uh, they have this weird engine, it's this weird partnership thing um, called MWM. So uh, short story is Caterpillar now owns MWN um, and it's mainly used in the Brazilian and Euro markets, but occasionally you run across a truck over here that has it. So they wanted to make sure that it was placed into here. Um, and again, MWM, SCR for the EPA 10 and newer, and then just the non-SCR engines as well are all listed in here. The other big change with International is if I go to International and I go to Max Force engines, one of the things that was missing is customers saying, I want freeze frame data. So what is freeze frame data? Freeze frame data is what you would get if you were to have a code logged into your ECM and it does a snapshot of your ECM. It tells you when the error occurred. It tells you what sensors values were occurred when that was happening. And it's just really good information that you would really want to have uh, when you're troubleshooting the code. So they've added freeze frame data into the international engines, which will definitely help with troubleshooting. I mentioned it before already with the GMC and Chevy stuff, but if I click back through here and go back to medium duty, um, there's the Isuzu North America. The, the F series and the H series are the bigger trucks. They're not that common. Again, the N series is the typical common ones, the NPR. Obviously those run forever. Those are the little smaller engines. The F series all run a different protocol on the engine and electronics, and they all ran the six cylinder engine. So they're just bigger, bigger, bigger ones. And the other one we need to talk about is Sprinter. So if I go in here, actually, I'm sorry, that's medium duty. We actually have to go to light commercial vehicles. And you will see under Mercedes, you will find more options for the Sprinter. So the important thing to remember with Sprinter is it was actually put under three nameplates. We have Mercedes-Benz, we have Freightliner, and we have Dodge all that we're pushing out the Sprinter nameplate. So sometimes you have to go, it might be a Dodge, but you actually have to go in here under Mercedes-Benz to find what you're looking for, and the same with Freightliner. But you can see the 906 has been added in here. And again, we have a lot of new coverage. So all these guys are in here. And again, very, very good coverage on the vehicle itself. Uh, to give you an idea, if I go into activations and tests and then click on some of these, you'll see all kinds of engine commands and tests that can be done on your Sprinters. So a lot, was, a lot of work was done there. So the other one that they mentioned in the brochure that was done with the new version is Metris. I have no idea what a Metris Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is. I'm assuming it's some kind of European crossover, if I had to go guess. Uh, but that one was added in here as well. And again, great coverage in here for it. So all in all, Texa has added a lot to it. Uh, one of the small things, and I'll, I'll do it real quick just so everyone can see. I'm going to kind of cheat here and go to powertrain, engine, Cummins, and we actually are hooked up to a live ECM right now. So I'm going to go in here and actually hook up to one so you can see how it works and how it connects. They did add one feature that people have been asking for time and time again. 
can you give us the oil reset command? Um, and the other thing we saw new now is it is reading your battery voltage right here as you connect and it'll tell you if it's too low. So we'll hit the confirm button there and get connected to it. So most often to reset your change oil indicator, you can do it with the cruise switches on your dash if you know the proper procedure and the proper iteration to hit all the buttons. But people wanna do it from the software. Personally, we find it's much easier to go hit the cruise control switches a couple times to reset it. But we can do it in the software now. So the good thing with going in this little quick little demo here is at least you'll kind of get some good coverage on a live ECM on what it looks like and what exactly you can do to it. We get asked all the time, how good is it? How bad is it? And we have plenty of other videos, I think, where we do a great job comparing it to OEM software or Snap-on or Bosch or Kajali or J-Pro or whatever it is to give you a good feel. Uh, but here we are on this ECM. And just real quick, if you go up to the parameters tab, you'll notice we have 160 live parameters, fault codes, ECU info. And just to show everybody in the audience here, it is a 2013 model. Um, and there's my CM2350, which is the 2013 and newer stuff. So activations and tests, cylinder cutout tests, some def tests, etc. But what you're looking for over here is in the settings tab. Where's the oil reset? Let me show you. And again, you'll see all kinds of things in here about road speed, cruise speed, DPF regens, all those things that are in there. So scroll down. There it is. Reset oil service. So that about wraps it up. There's your all your options for version 43. If you are within your first year or have bought a support package, you are free to update. We encourage you to do so. You can call our tech support if you have any problems at all. Uh, for those of you that have a Texa but are not in support, so you're not eligible for the update, you can easily purchase one right from our website at diesellaptops.com or give us a call, 888-983-1975. And I thank you for watching the video. Thank you.